Mohan Narla as one of the most outstanding contributors to hematology. Mohan's been able to, to help us to understand the complexities of the red cells, all of its different components, how they cause human disease, and how we might envision finding a way to address those diseases now that we understand more about them. There aren't many people who can really point to having that profound an impact on a single cell. He's brought expertise in chemical and bioengineering uh, to the field of hematology. For example, he developed biophysical methods to interrogate the red cell membrane structure and deformability. He's also developed novel methods for phenotyping erythroid precursors uh, at discrete developmental stages. And I think this fundamental and foundational research has really aided not only basic scientists, but clinical hematologists as well. I became interested in science when I was very young, maybe four or five years old. I was born in Chennai and grew up in Chennai, went to high school and the University of Madras for my uh, chemical engineering degree. My father was uh, a very well-known uh, Indian journalist. He was editor of the major newspaper in Chennai called Andhra Prabha. And he was a very inspiring person in my life because he used to talk to me about science. Science was always very exciting to me. And I always wanted to get my PhD in uh, North America. So I applied and was accepted to the PhD program in Washington University in St. Louis. I found Dr. Robert Parkman, who uh, took me on as his uh, first graduate PhD student. I decided to do my PhD thesis with him and my PhD dissertation was on red cells in flow. And uh, that's how I really got into it. Vegetables. Five or six decades ago, he collaborated with the pioneer Marcel Desis in Paris, and that collaboration resulted in a number of important contributions. He was a very famous French hematologist, and he uh, was as much an artist as a scientist. He really appreciated the beauty of cells and the I learned a lot from him. In Marcel Bézil's lab in Paris, in France, he invited the ectacytometer. The ectacytometry technology is still used to study red cell membrane deformability and is able to provide diagnosis for red cell membrane disorders. I moved to University of California, San Francisco, and there are a lot of patients with red cell disorders. I started really taking much more focused effort on studying all of them various types of uh, anemias that gave me an opportunity to access patients with all sorts of red cell disorders and apply ectocytometry and other types of techniques to study in detail the pathophysiology of red cell uh, anemia. Mohan has been able to, to, to show along with many other people in the field is that it's the cytoskeleton and uh, the transmembrane protein network and the protein network that constitute the red cell membrane that makes it so deformable. Every once in a while I surprise myself when I when remembering that Mohan started out as, a, as an engineer um, and I say that because his um, understanding of clinical medicine is profound. His uh, current work is really focused on on human erythropoiesis. I thought it was time to understand how this red cell is actually made. How is it fabricated in the bone marrow? So I decided about 15 years ago, when I moved over to Neon Blood Center, that our lab will focus on study of uh, human erythropoiesis. He's been able to take hemopoietic stem cells from the peripheral blood and differentiate them in a dish into uh, erythroid precursors and then ultimately into to red cells. And what he was able to do was to identify the cell surface proteins that change during that process of differentiation. The fact that he's tried to identify all the stages of red blood cell development so we understand where these different diseases affect the red blood cell and then trying to understand how there could be new therapies to help stimulate the red blood cells. 
He's really advanced the field. He has influenced number of other bright hematologists, not only in the US, but in Europe, Asia, Africa, all parts of the globe. He has been traveling all around the world to give lectures and seminars. And he always told me, it's during this trip that I meet fascinating people and I want to work with them. One of his greatest contributions have really been getting these trainees and investigators interest in a potential career in a field like red cells. I think I can speak for all of them who have been monitored by Mon and we are so proud to be your team board all over the world. He probably the researcher in the red cell field who mentor the most fellow across the world. Mentoring is one of the most important uh, part of a scientist's life. We start as a junior scientist, you are learning from other people, the teachers, and we reach a certain stage in our careers where it's time to really uh, repay to the field what you got from the field. He has all the attributes of the perfect mentor. Um, I aspire to be a mentor as he is, or at least a fraction of the mentor that he is. He's so proud of everyone he's actually trained, and it's really sweet to see how devoted they are to him because he's so devoted to them. Dr. Narla is particularly deserving of the Wallace H. Coulter Award for Lifetime Achievement because he's not only made immeasurable contributions of technology, of his time and talent uh, to the red cell field, uh, but he's made tools and techniques that change the way that we investigate blood cells. Wallace H. Coulter's greatest contribution was in pioneering flow cytometry and to be able to apply that to the separation of the different components of blood. The Coulter counter it has absolutely been bedrock to being able to carry out many of our functions as clinicians and as scientists. His contributions to this field are immeasurable. And I would argue that so have Mohan Narlis. I have the privilege of meeting him twice in Hialeah, Florida, where the Coulter Corporation was, because he was interested in uh, measurement of red cells, obviously. So I think quantitation is a very important thing. And I think that's what people like Mr. Coulter brought to the field, is making people think quantitatively and how can we measure things and how can we use that information to take Forward. Mohan is a wonderful, naturally warm, caring and gregarious person. And so I think it pleases him to help others. I can't think of a, a better human being um, to want to model my career and my life after than, than Mohan Narla. People flock to him, want to be in his lab, see firsthand the methods that he applies to this difficult subject. I think this as a whole makes him the perfect awardee for the Wallace Age Coulter Award for Lifetime Achievement in Hematology. So I believe that Dr. Narla, and AKA my dad, is deserving of the Wallace Age Coulter Award because he has shown a consistent commitment to basic science within hematology, as well as education and mentorship. And he's also thrilled to be receiving this honor because he also has an engineering background um, and has always respected Mr. Coulter.